morning here. I'm Sultana, a moderator for the day. I'm focal point of UNAI. It's morning here, but at the same time, I know it's afternoon for uh, Felicia, who is from Indonesia, and from other side of the world. So, Victor has not joined, I'm sure, he is joining us in North America, or uh, Mexico City, the capital of Mexico. And of course, we have from Europe. I don't know if Ravi is online. Uh, Ravi uh, from France. So he's from uh, California. Um, he's from Colombo, Sri Lanka. Uh, then we have Paul. Uh, Paul, uh, who is in Romania. Uh, yeah. And uh, coming to India, we have from North India, Delhi. We have the Goita brothers. Hash. Uh, Hash and Aditya, long time. Yes, and uh, yeah, other parts of uh, India, North India, we have Itika again from Delhi, Siddharth, Rahul, and Prapti. Welcome all of you. And coming down south from Tamil Nadu, we have Dr. Professor Benji Sumzaj. He's the only doctor from the health. Uh, we have for the uh, discussion today. And others are from Marian College. I know uh, our Vice Principal, Father Shaiju, he said uh, he is joining in between. And I have my colleagues, uh, Anna, Ronnie, who has been uh, working for this discussion to happen. Uh, welcome, Anna. And also I have other teachers, Elsina, Christina, Matthew, Sir, Simi John, and also students. Of, of Marian College. We have got uh, Alvin, who's been the technical person right from the start. Alvin, Vandana, Purno, Adash. I've got other students also joining maybe for me. Um, Ashik and all. Uh, Eben, I can see you. Uh, welcome all of you. Uh, I know it's uh, you know, uh, the lockdown, uh, global lockdown time. And after this uh, the lockdown, um, this, you know, this is going to be a turning point in history. And uh, we are headlong into the uh, digital transformation era. This discussion is definitely not a debate on the efficacy of uh, digitalization, but to see how people around the world have used digital platforms for bringing together the student community for academic and non-academic purposes. See, maybe bigger questions like uh, the adequacy of infrastructure, digital infrastructure, and uh, how maximum people can be brought into the digital net has to be addressed by higher authorities. We will be having a sharing session here. All the speakers for the day, we have educators and student leaders you can share your digital experience so that the vast possibilities can be explored by our digital native students and digital immigrant teachers like myself. So we can start our uh, discussion. Probably, uh, maybe it's not here, I thought we'll start with them, but. Uh, Okay, if uh, Felicia, could you uh, start? We have uh, about three minutes, three minutes, in leaders, what your digital experience have been, how we have been able to connect with people. Uh, I, I'm sorry, but uh, I didn't really hear your voice, so can you repeat it once again? Sorry. Uh, uh, okay, Felicia, mm -hmm. I was just uh, wondering if you could, uh, you know, share your experience, how mm -hmm. you have been using the digital platforms, uh, probably with your foundation, the Asian Lay Leaders, your experience, how you have uh, been able to use the digital platforms to bring together uh, the youth. Okay, so I will start first with my first experience when we use uh, how we work 
uh, mostly in online. So in 2012, uh, I, I came uh, to Manila from Indonesia to Manila, Philippines. It's a working for the, the student movement we call International Movement of a Catholic Student. That's a for the Asia Pacific, which is in the Asia at that time we have a 15 country. So we are based in the Philippines for the, for the regional. And then the mostly the communication and all the works uh, we have been done through the online. So it start even before the Corona time. And then how we uh, working on our coordination is uh, we are through the online email and sometimes we have to do our online meeting like through Skype in that time. And then it's a uh, well. Uh, we follow the time when 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 the technology and then also the online is become more demanding in the situation so we gathering people even to when we have some program like a asian program we did in the some country and out of philippines and then we communicate with our participants mostly how we get them is through online like we know them uh some people or some of our network introduce them and then we will ask like, uh, can we talk with them through the online like email or sometimes uh, WhatsApp, we call them and then we getting to know how about what are the activity and everything. And then that's we start to invite them for the, our program. So if I have to say most of our work is a 50%, even 65% is online through online. Sana. Hello. Yeah, hello. Um, uh, Felicia, thank you so much for your uh, sharing. And how do you find it um, easy to connect with um, people from different countries? Uh, whether the technical uh, infrastructure facilities were uh, easy in some countries and was it difficult in other countries to get in touch with people? Uh, you mean, over, is it easier? Years, or, mm -hmm. Yeah, from 2012, you have been using the online platform. And what mm -hmm. is the trend that you see in the education? Well, if if I have uh, we seen from the if like uh, from 2012 until now that uh, we see the difference. There's a there's a developing of the demanding on the online things. For example, like before, uh, most of our program is a physically program. Like we did the program and we bring people come to the country where the venue of the program is. And then later on, uh, because of. Uh, we see that if you do the program mostly on the physical program, then the member or people who who been able to join it will be limited in the limited number. So if you start to do something more online, then you will gathering people more. The number of the people who will be able to join your program or at least know getting to know about uh, your activity is uh, more. So my organization itself. Uh, currently, we are talking and then discussing about how we develop our website. So most of our program, maybe it will go 50% on online things like a course and then also discussion and everything will be going on through the online. Because we see that is a, we can reach people more than the physical program. That's what we've seen. But the, uh, there's also the minus uh, point on that, that is a, when you do the, it's most difficult on when we do the evaluation or the follow up of the program. When you do, did the something through online, then everything, it's not easy to see how people develop no? when you do everything through the online. That is, uh, I think, okay, the minus. Felicia, thank yeah. you for that. I think because the time is uh, catching up. Uh, ah, okay, to, sure, sure. Uh, uh, Hash, could you come next? Uh, um, from Delhi, could you share with us your experience? Were you able to bring in more people uh, through digital uh, platforms than you know physical, as Felicia was telling? Um, first of all, thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. 
and uh, for me i can only speak from a trainer point of view because we have been giving courses online and i would agree with felicia that online programs for me at least have been overselling far more than the offline courses now the advantages of this first is scalability because obviously you reach out to much so more a lot of people second i feel it's cost and time effective both now the issue i face with this platform is only one that even if you see the coursera the coursera is the number one website worldwide performing uh, giving these courses there's a fact that 89% of the people who buy the course don't even finish half of it so that is a major challenge that still i th- think we are facing that i i don't know how to but i i think the students not getting that motivation to finish that course and maybe evaluation less so yeah those were the advantages and disadvantages from my experience uh, you mean to say that your students join but not complete they do not complete yeah. yes oh, okay thanks for that uh, harsh and uh, moving on uh, dr venji uh, somraj uh, sir um, could you quickly tell us maybe two minutes at the most uh, to just uh, you share with us your experience you know you have plans for your pt students also to you know to do online classes and all that uh, so what your plans are and what your experience has been uh, doctor yeah first of all uh, hello everyone and thank you ma'am for inviting me i'm a public health dentist i'm working in uh, on a college as assistant professor what we are doing for the students at right now is like what we had planned around 6 months back we had uh, started them to go for the online classes and everything at, at now present we have distributed the tab for the students that means each student can learn from their home without using any textbooks or something and be in contact with their uh, moderators as well as teachers but during this lockdown period what we did was from my department we made the students to do an online course where we asked them to join not in a group in a large number it is basically small groups say example 10 people or 15 people at a time and we try to make them to do any programs like on i'll just show one uh, program which we made them to do was this one this was one uh, pro- a certification done for from the harvard school of medicine make each final year student was uh, able to do with along with us like the teacher in online we taught them how to go about this course like a recent pandemic because we are from a health background so we made them to do this one so like that we have got so many courses and everything that we can make them to do at a time and it is better in a short number say example 25 participants at a time or 40 participants at a time not in large numbers and if you win much but it's okay to take so much uh, doctor uh, one thing uh, that uh, you know a big challenge during this pandemic because now 30 million students in Mexico are now back in their homes and they cannot uh, they are not uh, trained how to take classes online so this has been the, a challenge for the, the Mexican government because they are unfortunately they cannot they don't have the tools oh, to uh, teach this, the the professors okay. and as well as the students so I can say that in my case I was very privileged to be able to I mean to learn from school when I went to to the university I also learned all these um many classes online and it was very common for me but for the Mexican population it's a big big challenge and unless uh people are from private institutions that they are attending class at private uh, schools uh, for the for the people who are in the public uh, schools it's a big big problem and unfortunately we have um Well, the main the main language in Mexico is Spanish, but we have seven million people who speak indigenous languages, which becomes another challenge, and uh, so we are facing uh, uh, big problems now. So I think uh, online education it's a great platform, but the thing is that now the new tools have to come to train the professors, the teachers, how to teach 
online classes, and also how to train the students how to take those classes because those classes need uh, self-discipline. Unless they really uh, take their time to make schedules, to program their classes, and to do the homeworks, it becomes a, a, a big problem. Uh, okay, thank you so much for that. I think similar uh, lines uh, we might be able to hear from uh, Prapti. Uh, Prapti, are you online? Um, Prapti, uh, she, she's from Uttar Pradesh and working with kids in uh, very remote areas. So have you faced similar challenges, you know, like how Victor was telling, maybe training the teachers, uh, maybe the students to, to get into these uh, digital platforms? Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, I feel really privileged to be a part of this discussion, hearing from uh, people from across the globe. Um, I think like challenges for us are very different, actually. Uh, we are working in areas where we are like, there's no access to technology, like parents have no access to uh, most of our learners are first generation learners and I like in my experience as an educator I have realized that um, if distance learning is happening then parental support is the key to it and since most of our learners are first generation learners um, that is not quite working for us again like techno access to technology is a very big problem uh, the only way we can reach out to our kids uh, the end users the last in the line uh, are via phone calls uh, or SMSs uh, because they don't have uh, a 4G phones or they don't have like a good connection to the internet and all that. So that's, that's a very big struggle for us right now. Uh, even for the kids that I taught in Delhi, because they were from like an underprivileged part of the community, they don't have direct access and they don't have access to a phone at all points of time. There is one phone that is being shared by the entire family. So they don't have access to phone and hence like uh, synchronous learning cannot happen. So some. Uh, hello, Prapti. I think that some uh, technical issues out there. Hello. I know. Am, uh, I okay. Am I audible? Am I audible? Yes, yes. Now, yes. 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 Yeah, so, Carry on. Uh, yeah, so the problem here in Himachal right now is that like we are just connected to kids via phone call uh, and we are, we are ourselves like the strategy has been to prioritize Maslow over Bloom right now. So we are trying to take care of other needs of kids, uh, for example, their safety needs, their food requirements, their ration requirements. Uh, we are trying to ensure that some form of learning is happening, they are engaged in some activity, uh, but uh, we do not have a defined learning structure as of now. Uh, most of our parents in Delhi and here are going to be, uh, are going to be just like uh, my, our, our migrant laborers and they like and as we are expecting, like uh, there are higher chances of kids dropping out and all that. So we are taking care of all that. So learning via technology uh, is something that is like fourth or fifth in our list right now. And we are spending a lot of our time just uh, helping them ensure meeting their other needs. Uh, the emotional safety, food. Yeah, and all yes, that. that's a great initiative to see that more, uh, you know, underprivileged students are also brought into the digital net, you know, maybe at a very uh, slower pace. And uh, with that, let's uh, move to Paul in Romania. Uh, are there things uh, different or similar in uh, Romania? Uh, could you tell us, uh, Paul? Hello, Paul, who is uh, an uh, architect, basically. We can't hear. Hello, Paul. Uh, I think it's mute or something. I'm not busy. Hello, Paul. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, please inform when he is. Uh, Audible. Uh, could you message to him, Anna? Yes, yes, message? yes I'm messaging. Yes, I'm messaging. Okay. Uh, who um, who else is there from outside? Who is online? Uh, okay. Before we move to you know uh, maybe Paul Siddharth, are you online? Can you listen? Can you hear? Yeah, yeah, I can. Look, I can listen to you. Oh, okay. Uh, maybe your experience. Is it something similar? Um, but I um, mean, you know, what's your uh, you know take on this? What's your view? What's your experience? 
so uh, my initiative actually is much similar to what uh, prapti uh, had said earlier like uh, i deal uh, we deal with uh, unprivileged uh, our organization deal with unprivileged kids living in slums and uh, rural part of the country so uh, basically when we started this organization in 2015 so i had a plan of you know uh, taking it to an online level taking a cl- class on the digital platforms but uh, uh, at b- back then there was a problem of like Uh, there were no smartphones available in the homes there were no uh, digital devices available in the homes but if i if i compare the situation from then to now it's much better like people have at least one smartphone in their homes so we can uh, you know at least initiate a class they uh, made what we have done is uh, basically every year we we we, we had to face the problem because most of the our volunteers are from engineering colleges so uh, during the summer break they used to go homes and they, they, then there were no class for kids uh, kids we teach so this time what we had done is we have we have like we have created a small group of like five kids because other other than that like they were not having phones or they were not having access to the internet so we have prepared a group of five kids and we are teaching them on general topics like general knowledge maybe history or uh... okay uh, for uh, paul is back uh, okay uh, paul uh, are you audible Yes, I think so. Can you hear me now? Oh yes, I can hear you, Paul. Fine. Uh, so okay. we are talking so some as I was, the... uh, as you ask me, um, here in Romania and also in Europe, the education system is a little bit uh, different. I mean, here you receive certificates and you do the traditional uh, education like learning in schools, university and so on. But uh, there is also a big fashion of doing uh, education in online. Uh, most of um, the youngsters they receive certificates about most of the fields that you can uh, do in uh, online um but uh, let's not talk so general i want to share with you something more like regional um here for example when uh, you want to um, do something with different groups that are uh, in other parts of the country that then you are um uh, and it's not uh, easy for you to go until there um we usually develop different uh, programs that other colleagues that we trained before can uh, do them in that cities so for example we have one national meeting in which we train a few educators uh, then these educators go home and then we prepare the materials for them so that uh, then they, then they can uh, do nine courses but they are not so um they don't have such a huge success rate uh but because they uh, are meeting even if they are 5 10 20 100 people uh the fact that you don't have to go there and you just prepare the material that save a lot of time so in the same time you can be in three parts of the country just because you trained others okay uh, paul that's a great initiative maybe uh Uh, on you know uh, you can scale it up a lot you are training building uh, uh, you know the educators so that uh, more people are uh, brought into this uh, digital net and that's the way i would like to put that and um, uh, can uh, rahul um, you know give us some input uh, rahul uh, is basically an engineer uh, working with underprivileged uh, uh, kids so what's been your experience uh, with the, uh, you know the students or the kids from the remote areas rahul yeah yeah uh, i can hear so uh, i think i'll be very quick a uh, few things that we are noticing while working with uh, teachers and uh, kids uh, is that uh, a lot of the teachers are innovating like uh, previously online teaching used to be just sharing of videos or sharing of websites or something of those sort 
but now uh, i think teachers are innovating and I, i'm noticing that a lot of uh, students are sending their videos uh, for example if if they have to write an essay they are recording their video and sending it to teachers uh if if they are if they are solving some math problem they are sending the photo to the teachers so i'm noticing a lot of innovation that is happening uh the second thing that i'm noticing is uh uh that there there is no boundaries to access to quality education uh, quality uh resources so for example what harsh mentioned earlier like uh, edx so now the thing is uh, a lot of the website which were offering quality education are now providing free access so um, so literally like even underprivileged kids are can access uh, any content any quality content uh, best teaching methods um, all of that um, and because it's it's online it is becoming very flexible for us um, and also to track their learning uh, but what what we are currently struggling with is reaching all kids i think it's very similar to what prapti mentioned uh, we because not all kids have access to phones or any uh, technical device it is very limited uh, connectivity is another big issue uh, i think very similar to what harsh mentioned earlier productivity and motivation is uh, is very low uh, one of the assumptions that i i could make is because when kids are surrounded by other kids usually there is some level of social and emotional uh, aspect that is attached to learning and because that is not happening uh, their productivity and in general motivation is is very very low um and also given that uh, very similar to what kapin was mentioning that given uh, the physical aspect of uh, they they are not engaged in any physical activity so their body movement is very restricted throughout the day uh and because of that uh, again like it it has a very adverse effect in 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 uh, in uh, psychological needs of of the body so again like not having physical activities result into less productivity and less motivation so that is also adding to to the stress uh yeah so those were the few things that we are studying mm-hmm. yeah rahul that's um, uh, precisely uh, what we have all been uh, seeing uh, you, you know there are a lot of advantages for the people who can be engaged uh, definitely with regard to uh, you know reaching out to more people and uh, giving them quality education and things of that sort but then while coming to the uh, infrastructure now even uh, the motivation of the students yes uh, all that uh, uh, can be issues uh, but then um, maybe the uh, post covid or global lockdown period uh, things will be uh, more virtual than we see today and it might become a necessity uh, you know uh, and a very usual thing for more people uh, to be on the digital platform uh so uh, i i don't know if ravi has joined i can one i can see just the number who is this uh, 7992616871 who is this I, i'm not able to identify uh but i think uh, uh, almost all the speakers from uh, you know outside marian has had an opportunity to uh, share their experience uh, now i would like to actually uh, ask uh, any of the teachers at marian uh, anna elsina uh, anybody who would like to ask a, a question share your apprehension uh, simi uh, or anybody from uh, you know you got any questions to raise or add on to what we have been uh, discussing uh susanna ma'am uh ah, i okay. would like to uh, yeah is everybody is am i audible yeah uh, very much matthew sir please carry on happy yeah. to hear okay, from so, you what's your experience yeah, uh, with social work yeah so uh, just wanted to give a different dimension to think about in terms of uh, technology and 
education so and it's just an apprehension from my part i have very less experience uh, uh, learning online and mostly offline and uh, so uh, it's always been uh, for me learning has always been about physical proximity where uh, a lot of people come together and ex- uh, apart from the course we learn a lot uh, talking and having friendship so even while i am an educator in marian uh, courses most of the courses i deal with has been residential so uh, inside the class and outside the class we over the period of 2 years we built a relationship wherein uh, so much uh, uh, other than the course uh, we learned so much from each other uh, as uh, so uh, i believe that uh, physical proximity has something to do with the quality of education uh, it just it's just a, a belief and uh, i don't know uh, if we i mean uh, technology has always helped us uh, in uh, i mean uh, enriching this physical proximity uh, especially uh, i think rahul also tried to touch upon this point where he said that uh, when students come together there is a motivation to learn so uh, this has been uh, yeah so i don't know how we'll tackle this issue because uh, as you said Uh, post uh, covid this might be a necessity wherein we will have to be at home and learn yeah. so i don't know uh, how this will uh, minimize the quality of our education coming from a social work perspective yeah so if somebody can yeah. uh, answer and give some ideas about how this uh, we can take care of this it'll be good yeah yeah it's definitely not a debate it's not because uh, i would say digitalization is the thing or anything but then yeah. it might become a necessity and that is the reason exactly. why you know there's a shift all together there's a paradigm change so that is why we are here yeah. and uh, hash uh, will you be able to throw some light on that what is your uh, uh, you know viewpoint uh, you know you have been quite successful with, uh, with regard to online classes and your online classes are more than your offline classes you mentioned so could you say something about this uh so actually maji so you're absolutely right this is a big problem because once you're in that community you learn so much from people and you make those bonds that i think go for life long now this has been a major challenge so the what we do that we have many students who don't want to take online courses but they'll travel all the way and do offline courses when it's not time effective or cost effective this is one situation i completely agree with you what i it's my personal opinion i don't know if it's right or wrong i feel that we have a mental bias already that because we have come from that school of thought so it's more comfortable to us maybe the coming generation the future generation this is the new normal to them so that is one thing that is possible nowadays you see friendships and uh, relationships being made on internet so i guess uh, this is also a possibility so yeah ah uh, yes uh, probably uh, when people when this becomes a necessity and people uh, really take some time to sit down and think about the cost effectiveness and maybe not yeah. all courses maybe some courses at least uh, uh might be 100% successful online uh maybe, maybe there are you know uh, uh even for social work i think uh, matthew so would agree to this now even during the covid uh, se- se- uh season um you know counseling uh, is being given is being provided online you know so uh, that was something and you know usually you find uh, you know field work where you really go to the people and even uh, dr uh, vinit uh, would agree uh, that lot of uh, you know even health consultation uh, uh, by the doctors instead of you know going to the hospital uh, a lot of uh, mm, uh, you know consultation happening online uh, mm-hmm. so probably uh, in due course of time lot of things that we uh, think that are necessary uh you know to do face to face or physically uh you know um, you know close by we might be shifting or changing towards uh, you know this virtual uh, uh meetings uh uh ma'am uh, 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 yeah, i like to add on to that ma'am um okay sorry to interrupt yeah ma'am. man i'd like to add on that one is that online uh, counseling actually it has been uh, helpful because when you do counseling i'm a counselor for my institution also 
what happens is like uh, sometimes most of the students especially during exam time face lot of stress but the moment they come in contact with their own batch mates and when the teachers also are getting involved because right now we have got something known as it's already been in place like mentor mentee system when they call their mentors and talk to them for some time because we have like uh, it's on gender also and for a male student male gen mentor for a female student female mentor so when they come in contact with them for and they just talk for 5 10 minutes also it gives a lot of boost up for them so i do feel that the online platform is like very useful in counseling sessions also not only for patients but especially for students that's one point which i wanted to add yeah what do you mean okay thank you sir so matthew sir uh, it's not exactly a solution for the question that you raised but then uh, there can be certain things that can be provided online quite successfully i feel uh, i would like to, what anna miss you interrupted uh, for something what is it yes yes ma'am um, nowadays uh, we are all unlocking the technology to deliver education in different forms and even the role of an educator is being changed more than giving a lecture or or the status of pre exam but role of educator has become like a facilitator and uh, and how this uh, role of facilitation takes place with the use of technology we have a collective responsibility in delivering the information to the students and also make them feel kind of motivated because as matthew sir told always learning can take place with face to face interactions and social interaction and since it has become a necessity we have to blend both we have to blend the benefits of technology and also uh, take considering our situations in which we are put into uh, we have to help them uh, interact as well with a with a kind of uh, monitoring or a kind of um, creative uh, or putting some kind of creativity and kind of situations of different kind of critical thinking so that they can use their mind for uh, some kind of innovations so these are times when we have to convert the you know transform our situations into something which is more opportune opportune and optimistic and and it can help the students to have their emotional intelligence as well so from a teacher point of view the role of educator is a big role because you now we all are inside in this doctor situation but still we can reach out the heart of students flexible and adaptable to their heart that's what i feel oh, yeah anna that's a, a beautiful point that you uh, uh, mentioned blending uh, so you know uh, both face to face education as well as uh, uh, you know the digital platforms available so blending uh, definitely would be necessary uh, so with regard to uh, Uh, uh you know this uh, discussion going forward and i think it's uh, getting time for us to uh, conclude uh, but uh, before that any questions uh, uh, or anything to uh, add to by any of our uh, students and if you think we have any schools have closed but many people are still going mm-hmm. to work for so for the essential activity but uh, we have found that um, that maybe the way to enter to the what we have done is that to start online classes through facebook to post on youtube and we found that people are very interested in following them so maybe the way to start with that is that maybe um if they can see that they can have fun in the classes they can enjoy the classes maybe that later we can move to more like more um like technic technical classes so it's just a way to have to put the 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 things no to motivate the students through interactive classes and maybe later move to technical classes yeah i think that's a good point mm-hmm. as well yeah the, the a very comfortable transition can be made possible if the, the students are enticed uh to use the digital platforms uh, you know by reaching uh, uh, watching videos of their interest and then slowly shifting them towards to more academic uh, activities so uh, that's a very good uh, thing yeah. yes uh, excuse me uh, i would i would like uh, to add something as well so uh, previously what happened was like uh we can we can we have used this phase like as a digital uh, literacy upscaling the digital literacy among those kids as well 
uh, like working mm-hmm. in the un- unprivileged sector. So previously, now the parents are trusting us more since uh, they, what they are telling us previously, uh, the kids used to use you know, use mobile phones for just for games or just for fun activities. Mm-hmm. But now they are actually using it for studies. So what we did was before conducting online classes or online schedule for this unprivileged kids, uh, we, we, we had uh, like a digital literacy kind of sessions in which uh, we used to uh, our volunteers we used to make videos, uh, you videos of how to use Zoom app and you know how to do screen sharing and how to just post your homeworks and whatever you have learned, uh, whatever uh, interacting things you have done through lockdown. And they found it very interesting. And now uh, the kids whom we are, whom are, uh, the kids who are available to avail this facility, and you know they have nice good and good internet connection or a smartphone. So they are basically now spending more time with a nice understanding of just using a mobile from a source of entertainment to using it for study. Yeah, so a lot of students, uh, those who are able to use the mobile for entertainment purpose, slowly they can be made to, you know, uh, uh, switch to more useful uh, things. Uh, that's good. I can see Itika online. Uh, Itika, I have not uh, heard, we have not heard anything from you yet. Uh, could you... Uh, join the talk. What have you a quick thing, uh, a quick uh, you know introduction or you know what your your experience has been? Hello uh, again. I would like to thank you for inviting me, and this has been great listening to all of you. Uh, one thing I would add as a working professional is something that I've observed: how lifelong learning has come back uh, as an idea. Earlier, I don't think I could see anyone around me. Uh, really talking about uh, going back to school like once we're done with our graduation or master's maybe uh, like there's a very clean uh, break from education into work but because of this situation I uh, been having a lot of conversation with my friends who are like oh yeah maybe I'd like to take up that edX course or maybe I'd like to go to Skillshare and learn this so this idea of lifelong learning uh, at least around me, uh, I'm seeing in the corporate culture, which I think is uh, quite a good silver lining to the crisis we're having right now. Yeah, yeah yes, uh, Itika, very true. I think you are preparing for your civil service exams also. Uh, or maybe uh, students, those who are, uh, you know, very interested in uh, improving uh, their resume. They can add, uh, uh, you know, to their qualification, a lot of online courses and uh, uh, definitely age is no limit, time is uh, not a limit, uh, you know, at, uh, at your convenience, whenever uh, you feel like you want to, you can take up courses that can, you know, uh, upgrade yourself. So that's a great, uh, you know, opportunity, yes, uh, and we can uh, uh, see that, uh, Definitely, this new change, at uh, this stage uh, towards the digitalization, uh, though a lot of us have apprehensions, uh, definitely this is going to be the end thing. And uh, hopefully, uh, our discussion today will enable uh, at least some of us to uh, get uh, one more step closer towards this change that is happening. Uh, is there one last question? Uh, you, we got five minutes before we wind up. Uh, is there any uh, question or anything uh, that anybody wants to add? Ma'am, may I? Yeah, sure. And Sina, carry on. Quick. Yes, I was. Uh, I'm. Uh, I'm I'm really enjoying this uh, kind of discussion happening here, and I was uh, curious about to you know that. Uh, we all are part of a kind of changes which is happening around us, like technology, technological changes happening around us and kind of uh, calamities, pandemic issues and all kind of things happening around us. And we all are thinking about how we can gather together and how we can go back to that particular kind of education we, we already used to. And uh, now the thing uh, it just came to my mind that is... Uh, we already used with that one kind of particular type of education. We are coming together, sharing our knowledge and sharing our experience, learning together. And now we are thinking about how we can use the digital platform for a better kind of educational system. And the thing is that it's already uh, exists here uh, during the time of, I think, uh, the uh, after the printing technology came here and the, from that moment, 
we are already uh, started our journey to this particular track and we all almost reached here in the 20th century like the digital technological uh, revolution and uh, we all are part of this particular evolution and uh, i think we can do much more uh, when we are coming together the people those who are sharing their uh, same uh, kind of passion and uh, people who have uh, p- uh, people those who mm-hmm. hold a kind yeah, of emotion i'm sorry i have to interrupt uh, 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 simi is there anything that you want to uh, uh, yes, add yes. that's in the yes. uh, yeah please speak yes okay. ma'am ma'am okay uh, ma'am uh, i do have very less like experience in this field but still karthi from up rightly pointed out one thing hello can you hear me yes carry on okay yes yes carry uh, on please. yeah karthi rightly pointed out one thing that is people who do not have access to technologies will suffer in marian also we have students from rural area actually they don't have any internet connectivity or anything suppose if we go through this mode of education how they will learn it is a big problem right how yes, yes simi will... uh, thank you for sharing your concern um i have to wind up this uh, because we are uh, you know we start our uh, time and uh, so that is a big concern yes we know that a lot of students uh, may not be uh, in this uh, you know uh, uh, digital net but we have to find you know uh, device or uh, plans for bringing maximum technologies uh, will definitely take us towards that and uh, now i would like to actually say a really thanks you know big thanks to everyone as my audience you know everybody you know siddhat tapi uh, i'm sorry if i'm leaving out somebody because i'm in a hurry now and uh, you know for everybody who, who participated who gave their thought and also to all the teachers at marian and the students of marian anna big thanks to you for organizing this alvin uh, done a wonderful job you know we got to make some spelling corrections there but we'll be doing that soon and posting in the group and uh, thank you so much all of you thank you very much i think you yeah, ma'am thank you Thank you. 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 Thank you.